because people are going to want to hear later on for those of you that don't um that will miss this we are starting right now wtf is a customer journey and why do i need it for my business so i created this particular series because i wanted to show people how to create a it, in a compelling, engaging customer journey for your clients so that you get paid, so that you don't have to hound people. They're happy. They're not confused. And so that's what we're doing here today. I'm going to give you guys some amazing, amazing value so that you guys can implement today, today. So who is this for? This is for people that are having trouble collecting payment. This is for people that are having trouble converting prospects into clients. These are for people that are having trouble with follow-ups and not understanding really how to follow up. And it's sort of an awkward engagement. Um, this is also for people that are having trouble getting reviews and referrals. And then people that have confused clients and prospects. So that's why I created this. If you guys have problems with any of these things, please stick around because this is for you. So in the next 60 minutes, I'm going to give you guys the keys to unlock this customer service experience that's going to create raving fans for you. So a little bit about my backstory. In one day, we lost $30,000 worth of business, retaining-based business that was coming in monthly about um, a year and a half ago in one day and we lost it boom like we just dropped uh these clients and i couldn't get people to pay their invoices we were getting some bad reviews we had angry clients we had confused clients people were going what am i paying for they were super unhappy and i had two choices i i could fire everybody start from scratch or i could keep the staff that i had and really nail down what my customer experience was and that customer journey. And really, if, if I could nail it down, I knew that I was going to be able to retain clients. I was going to have happier clients and I was going to be able to increase my revenue stream. And here's a, uh, here's an example of one of my mentors who uh, has a company called eight figure firm. And this is where I first learned about what, what a customer journey was. I had always, heard something about it and he had always said hey if you don't if you're not intentional about how your customers are interacting with you they're going to interact with you regardless so hopefully it's intentional and hopefully you're planning it out because the customer journey is happening whether you plan it or not and most of the time if you don't if you're not intentional and you're not planning it out correctly that's where people get pissed. That's where people start to lose trust in your business. That's where people start to not pay you. And so we want to eliminate all of that. And if you guys follow what I'm going to teach you today, you will create a powerful customer journey that's going to have your people lining up at the door and happy to give you their money, like happy. So here's the secrets. You can write them down, right? I have five secrets for you. We're going to talk about mapping, your customer journey. We're going to talk about shooting your customer journey. We're going to talk about editing for impact. We're going to talk about distributing this content and then managing the content in a way where it is going to be impactful. Like I said, we there's always in a sales process this weirdness when it comes to exchanging the services for the money, right? There's always this sort of feeling, oh my God, how am I going to get this money from this person? But when you are delivering such a good product and when the customer journey is or a customer experience is so pleasurable, it is no problem collecting money. They will be happy to pay it. And so we'll jump in on the secrets here. Secret number one is number one, you've got to map out the journey. And so what we did was we sat down and we were like, okay, what is the journey from A to Z? How are people experiencing our business? How are we putting it all together? And so this happens before they become clients, right? From the prospect journey to once they become clients to then post-client journey. And so there's three phases. So when you're in the prospect phase, how are people interacting with your brand in a way where they trust you? You've established yourself as the authority. You are building value. You're giving them things that 
matter to them, not necessarily to you, but they matter to them. And so we, what we did was we're like, okay, this is, these are our customer pain points. These, this is how we're coming into contact. These are their false beliefs. And then we created videos at every single step in that, in that process, in the prospect journey. Then we started talking about what is the customer journey and how are we delivering the product? So for us, we do content marketing for business. We do pros, uh, um, uh, podcasting. And so our, our journey is from development to pre-production, production, post-production, post and distribution. And what was happening is, is that we were only collecting money on the invoice. We were doing all of this work in the back end. And then we were just giving them the, the the videos and there was no real communication in between those times. So there was this, there were like weeks that would go by that we weren't having a conversation with them. And because we weren't doing that, they felt like, what am I paying for? What, what are you guys doing in the background? And so we said, okay, we have to let them know and we've got to over communicate what it is that we're doing so that they understand what the value is and why they're paying what they're paying. So we sat down and we get, okay, this is, this is what's happening here. This is what's happening here is what's happening here. Sort of like the Domino's pizza tracker. And we took that same concept of, Hey, we're making your pizza. Hey, we're putting it in the oven. Hey, we're cutting it up. Hey, we're getting it to you. And that's what we started doing, and this is exactly what you should be doing for your business. And we use a, a product called Lucidchart. It's a software program. Uh, look it up, Lucidchart. And it's really good for mapping out um, any type of workflow or, or flow chart. And so that's how we mapped it out. And so that's what you're going to want to start with. And let's talk about the stages of the journey, okay? So number one is awareness. The customer becomes aware of your product or service. How is that? Maybe it's Google ads. Obviously, it's social media. Um, it could be an ad, could be billboards, could be radio, TV, however you're marketing. That is the awareness phase. This is how people are finding out about you. Then what happens is you're rolling into the consideration phase where these people are considering your service. Maybe they like the post. Maybe they've reached out to you. And so they haven't really decided whether or not they're going to buy from you. Then... Hopefully, at, in that period, you're giving them the value that they need. Part of what part of our journey is these webinars that I'm doing right here, right? This is also part of how am I building value? How am I setting myself up as the authority so that when people are like, hey, I'm ready to make that purchasing decision, I feel extremely comfortable with this company. I'm not going to have buyer's remorse. And so that's what we're doing here in that consideration phase, right? Then once they make the decision to purchase – here is where a lot of businesses fail. They fail because they get the money and they're so concerned with getting more business that they forget about the customers that they have, right? And it's like it's it's like when you're dating somebody, you date, you date, you date, you're you're they're seeing you at your best. You finally uh become girlfriend boyfriend or whatever and then like you slack off, you get lazy. And then what happens is people feel that they totally feel it. And then they start feeling like, oh my God, I'm having buyer's remorse. Was this the right decision? However, if you are intentional about how you're touched, about the touch points, you will never have that buyer's remorse. You will always, they will always feel like, oh wow, I've made the best decision, right? So that's the decision making part. And then retention, how are they? How are you retaining them as clients? Maybe it's a one-off. Maybe your business isn't something that they they buy on retainer. Maybe it's a one and then they go. You've got to figure out, okay, how do I make that person an advocate of my business? And the advocate of your business is going to help you talk about you. They're going to give you referrals, right? And we're going to talk about how we create a referral partner strategy here too, because I think that you're not just creating a journey for your clients, but you've got to create a journey for your referral partners and you have to create a journey for your employees. And we'll talk about that too. So here are the touch points. We've got to figure out where and how the customer interacts with your business. Are you giving them gifts um, or do you have a welcome video when they become a client? We send them a gift immediately and a welcome pack. Hey, welcome to LaDuke Entertainment. This is the family. Um, this is what you can expect. And then immediately they're getting development calls and then they're getting um, 
our, our scripts and for approval and then scheduling the shoot date and what happens before the shoot and how to get ready for your shoot, making sure that you're not drinking and making sure that you have better clothes on and all of that. So we're giving them all of this information so that they're super involved and they super understand what it is that um, that we're creating for them. And I like to think of those touch points as like good news emails, right? Hey, I've got some news and it's great. It's great news. Here's the update. Hey, I've got another some some more good news. Here's an update. And so when they start to see that, every time they see correspondence from you, they're going to have a good experience. It's going to be positive, right? Because people want to know that when they spend money, that they're spending money on something that's valuable, that's worthwhile. Especially if you're selling a high ticket item like we do, you better have a good customer journey because if you don't, that's how people get upset. And we went through that. Like I said, we lost $30,000 in a day. Um, so when you guys are mapping this out, I also want you guys to think about pain points and opportunities for your clients um, because they have challenges. That's why they're hiring you. Hopefully you're solving a problem for them because businesses do three things. They either make you money, they save you money, or they're mitigating risk. And so if you are not clear about how you're delivering your service, it's, there's a disconnect and you want them to feel like you are not only going to deliver on what you said you're going to deliver on, but that they can, that they can call you for counsel and that you become sort of a consultant for them in your industry, in your niche. And when you become that person, that's when you can exponentially grow your business. That That's when you can start stepping out of the technician, the, the person that has to deliver the content. And then you step into CEO role. And we can talk, I, I have a whole talk about that, but that's not what we're talking about today. But think about the pain points, think about your opportunities. Right. I also am a really big proponent of how are we showing the client that we've done a good job? You have to you, and and they can't it, it can't be murky. It can't be. It's got to be super clear that, hey, thumbs up. We did a good job for you. And this is why. Right. So that at the end of it, they're going to continue being your client because the KPIs are your key performance indicators. Data is in line. The analytics make sense because that's how you lose clients too, is that you don't have that in place. And then they go, awesome. Especially for marketing companies, they go, oh, awesome. You did this work. Was it successful? Yes, it was successful. Let me show you how it was successful. Here's where you were. And then this is what we did. This is the result, right? And if you can show these analytics, if you can show this data at every point, they're going to feel a lot more comfortable once again using your services. So making sure that we're keeping up with data, metrics, measurements, and KPIs. So the tools for mapping that I was telling you, obviously Lucidchart, you don't have to, I'm not getting paid from Lucidchart to, to shout them out, but uh, use some sort of visual mapping journey so that you can map it out and you can see it all, all on a, all on a, um, in like a one sheet that it, it's better that way, that way you can move things around and you can go, okay, this is where they are now. This is how this is, where they need to be and you can map that out and get a little bit more organized. <clears throat> so here's the secret sauce. Are y'all ready for this? This is, this is where I had the epiphany for this entire thing. So I know you guys have heard of the five love languages, right? And it's words of affirmation, gift giving, acts of service, quality time, and physical touch. And I was like, man, how can I interact with my clients in a way where it's where emotionally I'm connecting with them in a way where they're feeling appreciated and loved. And so I was like, guys, to my team, I said, why aren't we incorporating more of this like love languages into our interactions with our clients? And as a result, <sighs> like referrals went up, you know, in, increase in spending, like the upsells were happening. We weren't waiting on, on, on any uh, invoices not being paid. And so I'm going to give you guys some, some uh, ideas on how you guys can incorporate for your, this for your business. Cause I'm telling you, this is the secret sauce. So words of affirmation, 
right? You've, there's a book it's called How to Win Friends and Influence People. And part of the book talks about like being lavish in your praise, being complimentary, but it's it, it has to be genuine. And so how are we doing that? You can compliment them on their social media. You can compliment them on their website, you know, thinking about being genuine. Um, talk about what you admire about them. Obviously, thank them. If you're not thanking them publicly on social media, that's another way to, to do that. When you're on their social media and you're commenting, oh, I love this, you know, that's part of the words of affirmation, you know, appreciating them, um, sending them cards that tell them, hey, thank you so much for being um, one of my clients, texting them out of the blue, letting them know, hey, you know, you're, you're appreciated. I'm telling you, these words of affirmation, if that is that client's love language, it will hit so hard that that it will just um, it'll just change the relationship because now you're speaking in their language. So that's just some some ideas for the words of affirmation that I think you guys can do. Um, gift giving. Guys, do not underestimate the power of gift giving, right? So we send out seven touches a year. In, in modes of Christmas cards, birthday cards. Um, now we're incorporating the butcher box. Uh, there's a company called The Basketry here in Louisiana that we use to send out our, um, our gifts. Um, whiskey tasting boxes, wine tasting boxes. Uh, really, and, and here's a cool idea for you too, what we do in, in our discovery call is we try to figure out who the spouse is, who the personal assistant is, and we ask them questions about the client to get them to, 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 to give us information about what they like. Do they like a specific sports team? Do they like um, to travel a, a certain place? Do they like a musical, whatever. And so now when you're gift giving, it's actually impactful because it's like, wow, you actually care about what I want. You're not just sending me some swag of Leduc entertainment on there. Like nobody cares, right? Nobody cares about your swag. Um, but they do care about the things that they care about. So think about that when you're gift giving, because that's going to be super impactful as well. Acts of service, right? Sending them a referral, connect, uh, leaving them a Google review, listening to them pitch their product, right? Sending, um, sending them and their team lunch, donating to their nonprofit. I, I, I hope you guys are really like writing this stuff down because I promise you, if you just take this chunk of the, the five love languages and you incorporate that into your customer journey, you will smash your competition. Cause I promise you, nobody's doing that. They're not being intentional about it. But if you do this, you will win at every single point, right? So think about doing acts of service for your clients as well. Um, quality time, guys, invite them to play some golf, invite them to breakfast, lunch, dinner, invite them to go on a walk, invite them to go to a net for networking function with you, invite them to a museum, invite them to a seminar, invite them to a band they like, right? Spending time with that, with, with your, uh, with your clients, super impactful, especially, and not just your clients, but your referral partners. If there's a referral, referral partner that's giving you a lot of business, you better treat that person like they are gold. Right, because they're your number one advocate. So spend some quality time with these folks. And then physical touch, use your judgment here, okay? Use your judgment, because um, not everybody likes to be touched. But I, but there's a problem here in the United States, and I think that there's a lack of just touch and 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 this coldness because people are craving this. Um, that, that, that touch. And I just got back from this uh, mastermind, that eight figure mastermind. And there were people there that I know really well. And like, we're hugging and like the, the, the hugs just really connect. Like, and once again, I say, use your judgments, right? Not everybody wants to be hugged, but the huggers like hug them, right? Make sure when, when, when you have a handshake, like there's a handshake, put your hand on their shoulder, right? There's, there, there is power in touch. Um, obviously use your judgment, but it's, it's a really underutilized, uh, love language that I think can, can really change the game, you know, especially for clients that have been with you for a long time. It's good. So let's talk about creating videos. 
Okay. So what we do is we batch create this content. What does batch create content mean? Batch creating content means that we're spending one day to record all of your videos. And usually it takes maybe three videos in the prospecting phase, 10 to 15 in the customer journey phase. And then post customer journey is your happy birthday video, your referral and review record, uh, happy birthday video, referral request video, and then review request video. And then that's your, your post post journey. Now, here's the thing about asking for referrals. You're, the people that love you will want to give you referrals. You just have to remind them. And we feel so, we feel like we're burdening people because we're asking them for a referral. But what happens is if I ask you for a referral and I put you on the spot, you may not know anybody. However, if you say, hey, uh, John, thank you so much for being a, a valued client. I would love to send you um, an ask for referrals on a monthly basis. I know you're busy. Uh, if that's okay with you, would love to send this to you like on a monthly basis. And if you have anybody that you can recommend to us, would love that. And so we do that on a monthly basis and people give us referrals through that process because they know monthly we're sending them that video. And it's just basically me going, hey, John, I'm sending you this monthly referral. I, you know, I know referrals are a good lifeblood source for, for your business. They also are for our business. So if you know anybody that needs our help, please, uh, please send them our way. Do that monthly, and I promise you your referrals will go up. Reviews as well. Hey, thank you so much for being a client. We really enjoyed this process with you. Did you enjoy your process? Would love a review. You know that Google reviews and Facebook reviews really increases um, our brand authority, and it also helps uh, people in their buying decision. Right. So that those 30 third party testimonials. So please leave us that review. And then people love to get those happy birthday videos. They really do. You know, when it's your birthday, immediately you're like, oh, I'm going to be getting some love on social media. I'm going to be getting phone calls, I'm be getting text messages. And so uh, really and, and I also make sure that you send them with a phone, right? Like your happy birthday video. Hey, John, happy birthday. I know it's your, you know, I know you're going to have a good day today. Um, yeah, make it a good one. And uh, we're here for you if you need us, right? So, but that create this content in one day. That way it's easier for you, right? And then you can get a uh, different color. You can get different outfits. Um, and then you can put this stuff in a teleprompter, knock it out. And then you have these videos ready to go when they hit that touch point. And so we have, there's, um, you can automate this process. If you're a little bit more boutique, then you can th put it into a client tracker and then my VA puts it, like sends it out. When it's time for them to get that touch point, they get that touch point. Then they get another touch point. So we're, we're super meticulous and super intentional about that. But I would recommend batch creating that content in one day, right? Um, here's an example of one that we do. It's called, uh, it's our, our discovery call. And it's um, once somebody signs up with us, they get a welcome to LaDuke Duke video where we're like dancing around and having a good time. And then they get this mission impossible discovery call uh, video where it's like your mission, if you choose to accept it is to set up a discovery call with us, you know, blah, 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 blah. And, um, and it does, it goes, goes really well. I'll send you guys the uh, PowerPoint so that you guys can see some of these videos. Okay. Um, secret number two, shoot your content in a way that's going to make you look professional and reinforces that they made a good decision hiring you. Get dressed up, make sure you put on some makeup, make sure it's quality video, make sure it's lit properly. Cause like when people get these videos and their quality, it's going to be incredible for your business. And here's the deal. Um, if you're in the legal space, I know we work with a lot of attorneys, but you've got a captive audience. If I'm in a if I'm in a wreck and I'm hurt, every email, every text message, every correspondence that I'm getting from this attorney, I am gobbling up, right? Because I know that this person is about to help me. So if at every single point I'm getting, hey, here's a video on an update on your case. Hey, this is what's happening now. Hey, blah 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 blah. And I'm getting these touch points. Trust me, I am tuned in. I'm watching every single second because I I want to make sure that I'm doing my part in order to get the compensation. 
right? And I know that there's things that I have to do in order to do that, right? If you're a family law attorney, the same way, any step of, of that process. So keep that in mind that you want to make sure that these videos look good because they're an impression, they're, they're a reflection of your business. Okay. Editing for impact. Make sure that you guys edit this, edit these videos, and it, it has subtitles. And also, guys, if you are not hitting the Spanish market, you need to be hitting that Spanish market because I would create these videos in English, and then I would also create these, the same videos in Spanish with subtitles, right? Because you never know where, where they're seeing these videos and, like, they're getting this information. So make sure that you guys are, are hitting that Spanish market because it's going to be really, really good for you, okay? Um, number four, distributing the content. We use a client tracker. It's in a Google spreadsheet. I can share that with you, but at every single point, we know where they are in the phase. And then our VA comes in there and they put the date of when we sent them the touch point. And so now we know, Hey, where are they? How are they receiving this stuff? What was the open rate? We can get the analytics. We can get the data, you know, but it's a good, you got to organize yourself. You can't just like have these videos and then no implementation strategy. Implementation is key here because if they're just sitting, if these videos are just sitting in a Google Drive, it doesn't matter. We've got to put them out and we've got to make sure that they're going out. I would house all of these videos on YouTube, by the way. Have them on YouTube. That way you can send the link. Boom. And it's super easy. And put them in an email and also put them, put them in a text message to make sure that they did receive it and they understand where they are. Okay. So that's distribution. And then management is key too, right? Like making sure that we're purging that list, moving people in and out of there. So if the prospects are now um, clients, make them clients. If they're now post clients, then move them into post clients. Like that, That this, this sheet needs to be managed. It can't just get ignored. It has to really be intentional and go, okay, this is where we are. And when you're doing that on a weekly basis, the customer experience starts to excel, starts to get better. And that's where we want to be. So here's the type of journeys that you need, right? And I know I discussed this before, but you've got to plan out the prospect journey. You have to plan out your customer journey. That's one. And then you have to plan out a customer journey for your referral partners. So if there are people that couldn't, can refer you business, how are you staying in touch with them? And are you being intentional? And we go back to the love languages. We go back to how can I build value with my referral partners? How do they understand how I sell? I invite them to my webinar so they understand where I'm at. I'm asking them to pitch to me. I'm trying to help them, right? So I, I actually create a partnership. A lot of my referral partners, we trade business. So we, we trade in kind. So that's something else that you can do. But be intentional about that. And then fourth, guys, please, 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 please incorporate this for your employees because they are the last people you think about because you're like, oh, I'm going to give them a check, whatever. But if you're not hitting these touch points with your employees as well, that's where you start getting quiet quitting. That's where you start getting people that are not involved in the culture of the company. That's where you get um, the the scorecards go down, KPIs go down, um, bad apples start to come up, right? Then people are, are are starting to talk smack behind your back, and it's just it's just really bad. And that's it's it's partly because we don't have a plan for employees in place, and it's super easy. Just take the same concept and put it towards your employees. Are you connecting with them? Are you um, sending them gifts? Are you, um, spending some quality, quality time with them? What else are you giving your employees besides a paycheck? Right. I know a lot of business owners are like, Oh, uh, I already pay them. Well, that's great. And they're spending eight hours a day helping you with your business. What else are you giving them? So think about those things. Plan all of these journeys out because it's really going to be impactful. It's really going to change how much money you make, how happy you are, how happy the people that are coming into contact with you and, and referrals. I mean, they just start to explode when you have this put together in the, in a, in a really nice way. So um, here's a, here's an example of the touch points for us. I'm not going to go into all of them, but we send a matrix box 
for prospects that are on the fence, it's a little black box with a red and a blue pill and it sends them to a landing page and it's me dressed up as Morpheus going, something's wrong with your marketing. We know it's been wrong, blah, 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 blah. And if you want to um, take the red pill, come with us, show you how deep the rabbit hole goes, take the blue pill, go back home um, and change nothing. And so it's a really cool direct mail piece that we incorporate with video that you guys can also do. Think about how you can incorporate like a direct mail piece with a QR code that takes them to a landing page that has a video that kicks them over the line. So that's the idea there. We have a welcome to Leduc Entertainment video where we dance. We have a Mission Impossible video where we want them to schedule their discovery call. We have a development phase video where we're starting to develop their content. We have a schedule your shoot uh, touch point. We have a prove your topics and scripts video. We have a loom video talking about the pre-production phase. We have a get ready for your shoot video. Production day, we always bring them a gift. It's a little baggy with a small champagne bottle. Uh, popcorn, some candy, and some batteries. And they're going, Armando, why are you putting batteries in there? And I was like, because you need them. And it was so funny. I had given a client some batteries. And that night he called me back and he was like, hey, my wife was like, we need some double A's. And I was like, oh, Armando, I think you brought some in there. And he's like, perfect. So that's why I always put batteries in uh, in gifts now. Um, after the shoot, we send them a what a great shoot video. Uh, we send them that we're in the editing phase. We send them that your videos are ready for approval. We send them approve your videos video where I'm dressed up as Russell Crowe going, are you not entertained? Dress, you know, uh, approve your videos. <clears throat> so that's really fun. Um, we do a, uh, your videos are ready to post. Um, we're starting to post your videos. We do a mission accomplished video. We have a get a five-star review request video or referral request video. And then we have a happy birthday video. And that's just for prospect and customer journey. I have a whole nother touch point for referral partners. I have a whole nother touch point for employees as well. So, um, so that's that. This is the offer phase, right? So, uh, I can't leave without giving you guys an offer. So, this is our done for you system. This is us coming in, mapping your your customer journey out with you. I spent uh, three hours with a family law attorney in in New York um, for the past past uh, past week, and we were able to really nail down where they were in the process. And at the end of it, they were like, "Oh my god, this is so beneficial. Um, we understand what we need to do and how to implement the strategies." We had already shot videos for them, so now we need to just implement the uh, the strategy. So. We can help you with that development. Obviously, we can help you with the video shoot, 10, 10 fully edited customer journey videos ready to ready to go for you. And then we can help you on the distribution end too. Uh, the total would be 8,500. But for the next 48 hours, if you guys pull the trigger, we can give it to you for 7,000. Um, so let me know if you guys want to pull the trigger on that. That's our done for you system. And then we also have a done with you system where we're going to sit down, we're going to develop, map everything out for you, but then we're also going to help you do it. Like we're going to teach you how to fish. So if you have an in-house team, we can train them. We can, you know, tell you guys how to do it and put everything in place so that you guys can do it for yourselves. So it's our, this is our done with you system. Usually it's 1200 bucks, but if you guys take advantage in the next 48 hours, you can get it for 800 bucks. So, um, that is my, that is my, uh, presentation. So, um, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to move into Q and a, I also opened up the chat for everybody. I believe everybody can access that now. Armando. Great. Awesome. Fantastic. So um, I know you guys probably have some questions. Let's uh, let's get to it. And thank you guys for coming, by the way. Um, this is really this was my first webinar on this particular subject. We've been doing the content into clients webinar, um, but I, 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 I got a uh, I got a call from a podcast, this social media marketing world podcast. And they were going, what should we talk about? And I was like, well, you know, I could talk about customer journey. And they were like, what is that? And I was like, well, this is this. And she was like, oh, yeah, let's talk about that. So um, that's how we developed this and um, wanted to make sure that that we could deliver it for you guys. So questions. Specific videos for clients. We, we, we kind of make those videos evergreen so they can go out to any client in your in your database. So you're not making us a, a individual video for each individual client. That's just as far as a time effort goes. It's not really. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah definitely keep them generic so that you can reuse them. Um, as far as how you can get started with the customer journey, you can give us, um, you can email me. It's Armando at Um, I'm definitely going to, you know, reach out to you guys as a, uh, as a follow-up. But if you guys are looking to get started, hit us up and we can do this for you for sure. Super easy. We do this all day. Can you show the other touch points for employees? Uh, yeah. So as far as, uh, as far as employees are concerned, I'm taking that, those, those five love languages. And then I know like Will, for instance, Will, Will, um, he loves basketball. Um, he loves, uh, music. We, uh, I actually took him to, uh, the tenacious D show here in new Orleans and, uh, had a, had an amazing time. Um, you know, gifts. I try to, um, I try to send out gifts w when I can quality time, you know, when I'm doing one-to-ones with employees, um, we're doing, um, you know, a lot of my, a lot of my employees, they, they, they say, I love you. And I say, I love you back. You know, um, it wasn't something that I, I, I grew up saying, but, uh, but I knew that that's how they, that that's how they felt love. And I was like, you know what, if that's, if, if I want to show them love, I can't show them love in the way I show love. I have to do it in the way they accept it. Can you talk more about the referral program and how to get clients to refer you out like testimonials? Yes. So as far as the referral, the, the referral, uh, partnerships, um, what we do with referral partners is that this the, these are the touch points. So I send them a speaker one sheet if they want to get invited to speak on like podcasts, webinars, things like that. So I send them the form and I say, hey, um, are you open to doing some podcasts or speaking? And they were like, yeah, I would love to. Then I send them a form. Uh, they send me a headshot and then we create this uh, speaker one sheet and then I can start submitting them to podcasts that we produce for other people. So that's, that's a touch point. Um, if they're, if they're ready, if they're wanting to do a webinar, like I'll sit down with them and uh, help map that the, the webinar out for them. I also talk to them about their customer journey and how we can help them implement this. Uh, I also sit with them and, and ask them about how we can refer them business in, in a different way. I've invited, I invite them to play golf with me. Um, I invite them to breakfast and lunch and, uh, and for a drink. Um, I'm starting to do joint venture webinars with uh, my referral partners. Did one last week with Hona that also does this they don't produce the um, they don't produce the videos, but they do the distribution and they do the uh, implementation strategy. They're out of Utah. If you guys haven't seen them, Hona is their company name. Amazing. They they work with attorneys specifically, but what they do is they take our videos and then they implement it in their software and then it goes out. But um, so yeah, we do joint venture webinars. I leave them reviews. I invite them to my podcast. I invite them to other people's podcasts. I compliment them on their social media. I trade with them. Um, I add them to my customer journey. I send them gifts. I put them on my direct mail pieces. I send them referrals, um, send them funny memes, informative videos, inspirational videos. Um, yeah. So like I have, but I have it all planned out right here. So if I, if I haven't touched them, in um in a week, then I know, ah, let me schedule a, a meeting with them to see how I can refer them business. Or let me see if we can talk about creating a joint venture webinar. Like there's uh, John Hansen, he was on my podcast and I've been in talks with him about, hey, we really got to work together on some stuff. And, um, and, and he just pitched me to a conference in Florida in April called the Exit Planners Institute. It's a conference about business owners that are wanting to exit and, and exit planning strategies. And so as a result, the company wants to hire my company to come and shoot the mastermind. I'm going to shoot his talk as, as a result of him, you know, uh, referring me business. So it's like a win-win situation, but it wouldn't have happened if I didn't stay in contact with these people in a very intentional way. Right. And you have to be intentional and you have to follow up and you have to keep track. 
If you don't keep track, then it doesn't matter. And I have a whole sheet right here that goes, ah, here we are with Paul Faust. Ah, here we are with Caleb Michelson. Ah, here we are with Eric Morgan, right? And so I know now what I need to, what other, what interaction I need to have next. I mean, super powerful, super. Any other questions? How do we get the recording of this and slideshow? I will send it to you. I will send it um, probably tomorrow. I'll have a an email that'll go out to everybody, and you guys will get the um, the slideshow and the recording for sure. For sure. Any other questions? So, yeah, I mean, in closing, I hope you guys take this concept and and really start to apply it. It, it really is about the implementation. It's not just – you can't just keep it an idea. If you keep this as an, as an idea, it's great, awesome. It's, it's, it's a really wonderful concept. Um, but if you implement it, you really will start to see the results. You know, so you really have to – you really have to do it. Do you support clients with understanding the needs of the client? A thousand percent. Yeah. So we go in and um, part of that development call that we do with them is that we really understand, okay, where are the client touch points? So for instance, I'll give you the story of the, of the family law attorney in New York. So I said, where are you having problems? Oh, you're having problems with them actually signing the paperwork. Right. There's this gap where they've gotten your quote unquote sales pitch. And now you're having problems with them signing the paperwork to get them on retainer because you have a high ticket item. They might be spending twenty, thirty thousand dollars. And so how are you making them feel comfortable? And so what I told what I told her to do is I said, before you even get them to that sales meeting, you've got to prep them up. You've got to pre-sell what it is that you're doing so that when you get to the sale, it isn't a it isn't 20 minutes of me trying to pitch you on a $20,000 product. If I don't if if I haven't had any sort of pre-selling that that that's happening. And that's why you have these videos or even a webinar, right? So I told her I said, "Why don't you create a webinar for your clients where you're talking about, "Hey, I know you're thinking about going through a divorce and it's probably the most horrendous moment of your life, right? Full of heartbreak, full of, I don't know what's going to happen. So are you type, are you type a person type a person is I see red. I want to burn everything down. I don't care about anybody. I just want to get out of this. Or are you type B? Are you a person that's confused that doesn't really know where to do what, know where to start, right? Are you number three? You're, you've been thinking about this for a long time. Um, and you're, you don't really know, um, who to, who to contact, but you know exactly what it is that you want. Right. And then she can kind of go through the scenarios of each avatar and then, exp and talk to them as if she's talking to them specifically. And this webinar can go out ahead of time, just like this webinar right here. Right. And so they're seeing this webinar ahead of time and they're going, oh, wow. Okay. She really does get me. She really understands so that when they do get to the sale, there, it's not it's it's not a sale. It's just us telling you how we work. We've you've already gotten maybe five or six videos that got you to this point that pre-sold you. So that way it's it's easy. It's no longer it. I'm telling you guys, as I've sent these videos and as I've sent these touch points, when I get to the sales pitch, it, I don't have to. It, it's not really a convincing. It's not really a manipulative sale per se, right? Because I know that I'm just like building value. And even up until after we have the sales presentation, I'm still building value. Like I'm still sending them, you know, op uh, opportunities to speak on, on podcasts or I'm sending them opportunities to, um, I'll, I'll send them a Google review or I'll send them um, a gift or I'll send them something, you know? So the, the, the party doesn't stop. <laughs> after I get, after I give them the pitch, right? Like for instance, you guys right here, you will start to see how I'm going to start following up with you. And it's not Armando going, Hey, I want your money. Hey, I want your money. You already know. I want your business. You already know it. I don't have to tell you. I want your business. 
right? But what I can do is if I continue to build value and I continue to show you what it's like working with me before you give me money, then it's like, wow, this is what it's like working with this guy before I give him the money. Imagine what it's going to be like when I do give him the money, right? And then um, putting all, but once again, you got to be intentional about all of this stuff. Do you send all your videos vertical or horizontal? Uh, horizontal for customer journey videos specifically, because I put them on YouTube and they're more long form. So sometimes they're like two, three minutes. Um, the shout outs on happy birthday, sh uh, shout outs for referral, shout outs for review requests. Those are all um, just on my phone. Yep. Any other questions? Ah, how do you handle people negotiating price? Do you stand your ground or do you find a middle ground? I don't, I don't negotiate. I don't negotiate price because the price is the price. And the thing is when they see all of the work that's going into you putting these videos out, you putting the touch points, they will now start to understand why it is that you are priced the way you are. Because if there's a negotiation in price, it means that they don't see the value and you haven't done your job in creating that value ahead of the sales presentation. So if if you're if you're going, "Oh, I'm I'm trying to negotiate price," it's because they don't value you. And you haven't maybe you don't have enough third-party testimonials, maybe you don't have enough case studies, maybe you don't have enough analytics or data to back up what it is that you do. And so that's what at that point then I would really focus on, okay, how do I deliver value? And if I'm just starting out with my business, I may give out, I, not may, I have given out freebies. I continue to give out freebies. Even now I still give, give out freebies as a way to show them what it's like to work with me. And at that point, I don't have to negotiate price because I just, I'm, I'm showing them what it's like. So I, I, it's like a free sample, I guess. So I'm all about giving out free samples right? Let's, let's figure out how, how, how we can work together um, first, right? How do you go about upselling while also trying to retain clients like the touch points with clients when upselling appropriate? So great question. If you know that what your offer is, is beneficial to them, the upsell is easy. So when we bring in clients and they're like, oh, we want to do social media and we want to do content marketing, immediately everybody gets a podcast when they work with me. Why? Because I understand how powerful podcasts work. Now there is an upsell after we get to like 12 episodes where they understand, ah, okay, I understand what it means to have a podcast and why I need it. And, you know, and then the up upselling happens. But I feel like if it's a valuable product, for instance, like the customer journey, I upsell <laughs> the customer journey because I know it's a powerful product. So I have no problems, you know, upselling people. And when they're your client and they're having a good experience, um, they're also going to go, yeah, what else you got? Um, how important is a referral network in connecting other business professionals to your customers? Extremely. It's, it's the reason why I tell them to have a podcast. <laughs> I, this is the reason why I'm a guys. Here's here's the nugget that you guys, and this is going to be my next webinar, but it's podcasting for profits. And this is what I tell people all the time. I said, guys, you have to have a podcast for your business, not because anybody's going to watch it. Nobody's watching your podcast, unfortunately, right? It just, it just is. So they're going, oh, there's so many podcasts out there. Why am I going to do another podcast? Blah, 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 blah. The reason why you're going to do a podcast is so that you can create deeper relationships with your referral partners, with people that can potentially be your clients or uh, people that are going to increase your social currency. So with my podcast, uh, Spaghetti on the Wall, the only way you're going to get on my show is either you're going to increase my social currency because you already have a following and because you're on my show, I'm associated with you or you're going to be a good referral partner for me. And we're we're gonna work together in the future. That's how me and Brian Hong started working together. He's uh, from Infantech. He's my SEO website guy. That's how me and Denise started working together. She's my fractional CFO, fractional COO. Um, that's how my my car wrap guy got got started. We we did a podcast together. I, I mean, I can tell you, all of my clients have been on my podcast. Every single one of my clients have been on my podcast, and I was able to go, hey. 
this is a this is the experience of, of working with us, right? I, I gave them a platform to work to work on to, to to showcase them, but then I gave them a couple of videos that they could use on their social media, and they saw and they put it out and they saw the response that they got and they're oh my god, Armando, yeah, would love to uh, to do more of this stuff, and that goes back to that free sample thing that I was talking about. So for your business, the same thing. Right. If I uh, if I know I'm a chiro chiropractor and my referral partners are, are personal injury attorneys, then I'm going to create a podcast and I'm going to invite personal injury attorneys all day like that. That's just exactly what I'm going to do. So, yeah, I think that um, creating, you know, that referral partnership is super important. I also created a hundred that that 100 person uh, dream list. I don't remember where I got that uh, from, but it's like, you know, 100 people that you really want to meet or do business with. And you create that list and you go through and those are the people you start inviting to your podcast. And look, maybe at the beginning, they're not going to accept it because you don't have enough following or whatever. But I mean, I was able to get Pat Lencioni on my podcast the other day um, because I was already 100 episodes deep. Right. And he was the one that wrote the book, uh, The Six Types of Working Genius, which is an amazing book, by the way. But, you know, and then when other businesses saw that I had Pat Lencioni on my podcast, they're like, oh, he's legitimate. Immediately, my social currency went up, went up because I've got people that are high caliber folks that are on my podcast. So now my authority goes up as a result. So, yes, highly, highly, highly recommend um, using podcasting for your referral network and then using this customer journey as a way for you to do the touch points for your referral partners um, because it's just going to deepen that relationship. So a thousand percent use that, you know, use this, uh, use these, use this technique for your referral partnerships. Anyone else? Questions, comments? All right. Well, look, I appreciate everybody being here. I had a really, really, really good time sharing this information. Obviously, I'm super passionate about it because it works. I know that um, one of the th big things that my um, my mentor always told me was, you know, the speed of implementation in your business is tied. No, the speed of growth in your business is tied to the speed of implementation. And so if you can implement fast, you can grow fast. And so that's what I've been doing um, for the past, you know, three years working with him. And, um, and whenever I see something that like is just super powerful, I love to share it, you know? And so I hope you guys take this concept and, and apply it to your businesses and that you guys grow as a result. And look, this is obviously five love languages was written for relationships in general. So use that too. You know, my wife, she doesn't like gift giving. She's not like a gift giving person. She loves quality time. She loves words of affirmation. Me, my love languages are gift giving and acts of service. So she knows that if she does things for me, if she buys me gifts, I'm going to feel loved. And when I spend time with her and I give her uh, praise and I compliment her, that that she's feeling loved. So should should work in any type of relationship. That's why this is, you know, that's why I created this. So. With that being said, thank you all so much. I hope you guys have a good uh, good weekend. And if you guys live here in New Orleans, happy Mardi Gras. Uh, I'm going to go do some Mardi Gras stuff. And next week I'm being Disney. So I will see y'all later. I'm going to stop the